The latest Substance Painter update is going to save you hours when fixing artifacts. In this video, I'll dive into its features so you can make the most out of it. I'll also show you how I use it in my professional workflow. So if you've done baking before, you're probably used to this max frontal distance and Adobe's added this cage automatic experimental feature. But you know, how does this work and why is it so important? And also, what the hell is a cage? So many students don't actually know this, but the frontal distance that you're working on is actually a physical cage. Everything in baking is worked off a cage. It just depends if it's automated, we put a value in or we actually customize it fully ourselves. And you'll know it's true because even with no cage assigned, we can come up here and change the cage settings even with no file assigned. And you might just say, you know, that's fine. As soon as I see a red piece, I just come to the max frontal distance and expand it and all my problems are solved. But it's a little bit more advanced than that. But then the next issue is if you have things like equipment, you have that cage overlapping and intersecting everywhere, which is going to cause loads of artifacts. The next solution is using a feature called match by mesh name. So you don't get any of those cage overlaps. But even then we're going to have a couple of issues because the cage will intersect on itself. You look around the straps there, they're kind of like overcasting a little bit. So the first thing to understand is ray cast distance. So the mesh is expanding outwards and collecting high poly information. This is fundamentally what the cage is. So mostly it works well, but in different areas around the mesh, we need different distances. It's especially true around the lips. Imagine if it was all the same distance, you'd get a lot of overcasting and then the bake wouldn't come out very well. Okay, so cages are important. The next phase is you go out and research how to use a cage. This is usually done manually. Or you can come into the biggest character art discord and ask for help. Loads of people give you advice on working with cages and any errors that you're going to pop into. Okay, so what is a custom cage file and how can you use one? So fundamentally, they're just duplications of the low poly mesh with a slight expansion. So in Maya, I use normal expansion. And the important bit is that they have the exact same number of vertices as the original low poly. So Substance is going to look at this mesh and then use that to predict the distances of the cast. So you see the red colors are the cage what I've set up here and the underlying surface in the wireframe is the low poly. So it's really important when it comes to areas that are very close together, like on the teeth, for example, we need a really tight cage. So the bake picks up really, really well. Then also at the same time on broader, more low poly elements, we don't need it to be so close so we can have it pushed away. So that's where a cage comes in really useful. We can basically vary the distance. And the best way to see that practically is in Substance itself with its previewer. So you can see all the red areas. And with the expansion and compression, we can basically start to cover it. But you'll see as we move it, different areas start to kick in red at different points in time. So if you're using the standard methodology, then we'd have to average all the cage all at once. But the problem with that is the small areas like the teeth, they're going to cause overlapping issues. So we really do need a custom cage. You can see it happening on the top of the tongue there where the red is starting to kick in, but we're getting closer to the teeth topology that I want. So there's no one size solution for everything. We have to create manually that topology ourselves. So now to show you the automation, if you change cage to automatic experimental, it's going to look at the mesh and then try and study it. And within a couple of seconds, it's going to generate a custom cage. So if we were doing this manually, while it would be super accurate, it would take a lot of time because we'd be going all across the mesh and expanding and contracting it. And as you see already, it's just automatically generated it pretty close, to be honest. And from the first pass, there are no red areas that are glaring out. I actually couldn't find some at all. And for every single vertice, you can see that it's gone really, really close to the mesh or as close as possible as it can. Now, the true test is to see where it's around the teeth. So remember where we had to make a really small distance, but it broke the tongue. You can see how all the vertices have basically assigned themselves, deciding what the best sort of distance per vertex is. So it's a really, really powerful update. And quite surprisingly, in more complex areas like where there potentially could be overlap, it seems that it studied it quite well and hasn't overcast onto itself. So super impressed with the automatic feature here. Okay, so here's how I suggest you integrate it in your workflow with four stages getting better at each time. So the first is your test bake. So just making sure everything's aligned, you know, you've got your meshes on top of each other, kind of like standard stuff there. Stage two is you wouldn't use the cage, but you test out the max 
frontal and rear distance and just basically see if that solves your solution. If it does, then you can just move on to texturing, especially if there's no artifacts or anything. So here's the new part of the workflow. If the raycast doesn't work, we can come in and then auto generate a cage. So come into cage settings and then just set that to automatic. Now, if there are any errors with the auto cage, then we move on to the next stage, which is setting up your own custom cage. Now this is going to have the most accuracy and you'll have full control over every single vertice so it won't cause any issues. And in fact, there's one limitation with auto cages, which I would like to see Substance fix. So before going over the limitations, there's definitely something you must master with cages. It's not just a thing to rely on any forms of automated process. You fundamentally need to know how to manually produce it. So if you're interested in doing manual cages, I have done a video on the members section, which does cover the full process. So all forms of baking artifacts, we actually go through customizing your own cage and then basically breaking down step by step how to solve every single artifact that you can find in baking. So if you're interested in that, do check out the video. Or if not, I'm sure you can work out there's loads of videos on YouTube that cover all those individual bits. However, all the information is in that video. And we did have the members say it was one of the most or single most informative baking videos they've ever watched. So nice compliment there. So my final thoughts on this auto cage and how it basically fits inside of the workflow. I mean, if you manage to automatically produce something really quickly, then that is a bonus. It saves you loads of time in customizing those cages. If this was a production, you know, it was going out for AAA, then I would probably just go straight to manual cage creation. Like the last thing I want are little pesky problems that I need to fix. Now, something I'd like to see Substance implement into this sort of workflow is the ability to export this cage and then come in and fix any areas that are sort of popping up and then re-importing it back in. So you have things like Marmoset, which are really good at fixing those sorts of issues. But to be honest, the automation, for what it's worth, a one-click solution for this mesh, for example, it's done a fantastic job. I can't see any sorts of issues here. I think the areas that it's going to work really well is when you're baking character faces because often we'll have the mouth slightly open and then customizing a cage to sort out all that lip overlapping area can be really frustrating. So with the automated process, we can just quickly test out a character. So tell me how you get on with this automated feature and do remember to not really rely solely on automated processes really understand the core fundamentals and even try a test cage for yourself. It's going to help you down the line when those automated features don't work. If you are going to watch the ultimate baking videos, I also highly suggest watching the skin detailing. They all come in the same package for people who are joining members, along with questions and answers and video feedback and a private community. So if you are interested in that, click join below. But if not, as I said, there's plenty of free resources on the YouTube channel for you to catch up on. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.